Hey guys and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. I'm John and in this video we'll be talking about long range pictures and what it takes to capture them to see if it's good evidence for the flat earth claim. Let's get started. Flat earthers like to use pictures of long range landscapes to prove that the earth is flat. So we'll be taking a look at the current world record, which is this picture right here, captured by Mark Brett. And here's Google Earth showing the distance captured. If the world record stands at 443 kilometers and requires you to photograph a mountaintop from another mountaintop, you would think that flat earthers would have a ton of these types of pictures to show since they wouldn't be limited to mountaintops. So let's find out what exactly is needed to take these types of very long range pictures on our spherical planet. On to the science. In order to take these long range pictures, there are a few things you need to be informed on and plan for. First, there's geometry. You need to take into account the curve of the earth to be able to plan for these types of pictures. Here's an example of how you would aim for some targets without any other factors in play. You would have to pick two points of high elevation that both have a direct line of sight to each other over the horizon. Otherwise, the earth's curve would be in the way and this would hide your target. This, however, is not enough to make a world record photo for a long range. So let's take a look at other factors. Second, you have refraction. Since you're looking at light traveling within Earth's atmosphere, there are things to take into account. Your line of sight to the target will not remain the same height above sea level. From your high elevation, your line of sight will start high and then get closer to the ground and start going higher again until it hits your target. This change in altitude means that the light is passing in different air densities that each have their own refractive index. In other words, the light will refract more and more upwards or away from the ground as the altitude of the light's path decreases and the density increases. This curve is helpful for long range pictures because it's extending your line of sight by a small margin. Once the path of the light starts gaining altitude again, it will refract more and more downwards or towards the ground and continue to gain altitude until it hits your target. Because of this curving of light, it gives you an opportunity to use it to see something that would normally be below the horizon, but it has to be well calculated and planned out. Using refraction to your advantage is what lets you make world record photos in terms of distance to your target. So let's go over the visibility factors now. Third, you have air dryness. For taking long range pictures, this is the most important visibility factor. At 60% humidity, your target is nearly invisible at these distances. At 50%, it's visible but very poor quality. At 40%, the quality is good enough to make it better with image processing. At 30%, you can start seeing it with your naked eye. At 20%, you can even see details. And at 10%, it's as low as it gets and you have the best possible conditions. This relative humidity usually goes hand in hand with air temperature. Warmer air will usually have lower relative humidity. Knowing all this, you still need to calculate the relative humidity for each layer of air density that your line of sight will be running through, so it's not an easy task. Fourth, you have ambient light. As the sun illuminates our atmosphere, the air itself will also become brighter. With long distance pictures, this can be the difference between your target being visible or being merged into the background. So the best thing to hope for here is to have high clouds that will obstruct the light and keep your entire line of sight in shade. In this example, we see a better contrast between the mountain and the sky when it's in the shade. Low clouds are also undesirable because they might come between you and your target. Fifth, you have turbulence. Turbulence is when masses of air are mixing together. The result of this effect is to have bumpy or blurry lines where straight edges should be. So it's best to wait for calm conditions where the air is not mixing and is remaining very calm while you take your picture. Sixth, you have air particles. These can show up either naturally or from human activity. Their makeup can range from a few different things, but essentially it's when the atmosphere is dusty rather than clear. With long distances, this adds up and can significantly significantly impact the quality of the resulting picture. And finally, you have your target. If your target is a brown colored mountain, it'll lose color with distance and slowly blend into the background. If it blends too much, you won't have enough contrast to discern the mountain from the background, so it'll essentially be invisible in the picture. If your target is a snow covered mountain, then the white color along with the higher amount of light it reflects will give you a much better contrast with the background and be seen much more easily from a distance. As you can see, it's very challenging to be able to take these pictures. Most of this challenge comes from the spherical shape of our planet. 
Mark Brett, who took this picture, is very well aware that our planet is spherical since a lot of his planning revolves around that fact. Flat Earthers just used his awesome work and twisted it completely, like most of their other claims and arguments. Albert Einstein said it very well when he said this about his scientific theories. No amount of experimentation can ever prove me right but a single experiment can prove me wrong. In science, we don't try to prove our claims right. We always try to prove them wrong. It's when everything fails to prove a theory wrong that it becomes right. So if you're a flat earther watching this and you're interested in proving your model to be correct, then what you need to do is to try and prove your model wrong and see if it holds up to scrutiny. If you fail to prove it wrong, then you need to show your results to others so they can attempt to prove it wrong as well. If you live on a flat plane, then you should be able to see at least multiple dozens of miles ahead of you from sea level. So why don't you start with this simple experiment? Show us the longest range picture you can find or take it yourself where the camera is less than 10 feet above sea level and your target is less than 30 feet above sea level. And I don't mean the base of your target. If your target is the 50th floor of a building, then the height above sea level that the building sits on plus those 50 floors will be well above 30 feet. If you find something, put it in the comments. I bet you'll find pictures at sea level to be very unimpressive with less than 3 miles to the horizon and already about 30 feet of hidden view after just 10 miles of distance. Be honest with yourself and good luck. If you like this video and want more content like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to talk about, put it down in the comments below or come follow me on Twitter or Facebook, links are in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.